The River Valley civilization we're going to study now is the one that became India, so it's in ancient India. So what you're looking at here is called the Indian subcontinent. So it's in Asia, but it's called a subcontinent because it's separated from the rest of Asia by the Hindu Kush Mountains, the Himalaya Mountains, and the Indian Ocean. So it's isolated. So just a little short thing of how it got there. There's two tectonic plates that meet. When tectonic plates meet, you sometimes can get uh, mountains. Sometimes you get rivers and valleys. Um, and that is how the Himalayan mountains are formed. You can see right here is a valley that is cut down, which makes them separate from the rest of India. So how does geography impact the culture of India. We well, just saw those pl two plates meet. That leads to things like earthquakes, mountains, valleys, rivers are formed. And also, I told you, it's cut off from the rest of Asia by those three things. The Himalayan mountains, the highest mountains in the world, the Hindu Kush mountains, and the Indian Ocean. So the Himalayan mountains right here are the highest mountain chain in the world. They also have the highest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. It's 29,028 feet tall. Um, and coming out of these mountains are two big rivers, the Indus River and the Ganges River. So they sustain or make livable an area of 1,700 miles, 1,700 miles. And there they are, the Ganges and the Indus, the two main rivers in India. Here's the Himalaya Mountains. This is from satellite. That's what they look like. When you're in them, they're absolutely gigantic. They're, as you can see, they are newer and rougher, pointier and taller than the ones near us. These are the Hindu Kush Mountains near Pakistan. They're very similar, not quite as high, but you can see how tough it would be to travel through those. And this shows you the Indian Ocean surrounds all of India until almost where these mountains come to the ocean here. So that makes it very difficult to attack. I want you to pause the video, take a moment, and fill in this map which you should already know these things from the map you did last class. So how did climate or uh, the weather impact Indian culture? We've talked about those two rivers, the uh, Indus River and the Ganges River. These lead to floods, which we will talk about in a, in a moment. If you live near a river, one of the dangers is it might flood. We're going to look at what a monsoon is. They have monsoons, which are dangerous and unpredictable. You're not totally sure when they're coming. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, so, because it's cut off, it's difficult to invade. There is the one way through the mountains, the Khyber Pass, through the Hindu Kush Mountains. And also, because they're cut off, the big impact on their culture is going to be other cultures are not coming in to visit them and so they aren't going to have any impact coming from the Middle East like Mesopotamia they're not going to have any Chinese or Japanese people coming in because they're cut off from the, with those mountains and the uh, ocean which makes it very difficult to get to them so what is a monsoon let's look at one So as you can see, a monsoon is actually the wind. Even though it's raining in this clip, it's, it's the wind that is the monsoon. So they're extremely unpredictable seasonal winds. So winter monsoons bring dry air, so no rain. But the summer monsoons bring these amazing rainstorms. So what are the repercussions? 
Well, in the winter time, it's really dry air. So um, it's not going to be what we're looking at here, but it does make it hard to farm and things like that. Also, it's dangerous. Trees can fall down. Um, but in the summer, it's what people usually think of when they think of the Indian monsoon. So let's take a look at one. So this is a, mon a modern day India during a monsoon. So from October to win February, we have the winter dry monsoons. But in the summer, from June to October, they have the wet monsoon. So there's massive wind, but even after the wind leaves, you have flooding. There's lots of rain, it causes the rivers to flood. Um, one good thing that comes from that is silt comes out of the river and fertilizes the soil. Um, some dangerous things that can happen is the rivers can actually change where they go because the floods are so big. So if you live next to a river, your house might end up in the river. You can see what it's like in a town, like the whole place is flooded and it's like almost knee high for most of these people. Um, and it's very unpredictable. People don't really have a good feel for uh, when they're going to be coming. So here you can see summer monsoons um, are going to come from the ocean, and that's why water comes with them in the rain. Winter monsoons are actually coming from the land, and so they don't bring a ton of rain. There's a little bit, but not a ton. It's mostly in the summer. So, let's look at the first people who lived in these conditions. It's called the Harappan Civilization. So what were the characteristics, or what were they like? They lived on the Indus River. They have two big cities, Mahinjadaro and Harappa. That's why they're called the Harappans. Um, we haven't been able to translate their language, but we know that there are 400 different symbols they used, so uh, like pictograms, that kind of thing. But like I said, no one's ever figured out how to translate it. Um, we know that they protected their cities from these floods. We also think they were probably a theocracy, so the religious leaders and the government leaders are the same people. Um, and we know they used some religious symbols like a bull, and they had some fertility symbols. And the biggest thing is they grew cotton, which is what India is going to become known for, is growing great cotton. So here on this map, you can see the Indus River here. Uh, Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro are the two big cities. We're going to look at one of those in a second. So, um, I showed you that they're going to get rich from trading cotton to people. The two main cities that are going to produce this are Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa, so let's look at what they were like. They had a planned um, grid system like modern day cities, like New York City is all squares. It's very easy to get around. They have citadels, so those are fortified areas to protect the city, like towers. They're going to invent standard size bricks, so every brick's going to be the same size, which make, means everybody can um, build these rectangular shaped buildings. It's really easy to build things if you have bricks already made. So they can plan out their city in a grid right here. The bricks are all the same size. So you can plan ahead of time because you know how big the bricks are, how many bricks you need, how big your room is going to be, all of that you can do ahead of time without any, um, without having to try and see how it works. They also, all these houses have plumbing and sewage, which means they have running water. And you can go to the bathroom and have the wastewater go out public baths, which we're going to see later in Rome. It's a way to keep everybody clean so you can live together 
in these, they're basically apartment buildings without getting sick. And it appears everybody's house was the same, so we, we know that the social discrepancy was not large or great. So let's look at the city. So this is based on the buildings, what's left of the buildings. This is what they think the city looked like. Basically high-rise apartments or townhouses like you would find in our cities. Looks like an elephant back there with people around it. Um, so, you know, four or five story tall buildings. They've got rooftop decks. Um, and because they've got sewage, that's going to be a clean place to live. So, what happened to them? They're obviously very advanced, so what happens to them? We know that the tectonic plates move. Remember, we saw this at the beginning, which we think caused earthquakes. And from there, they think that maybe the Indus River also moved and their cities ended up um, getting destroyed. They also think it's possible after the earthquake, they just weren't able to farm as well as they used to be able to, and then the people had to leave these cities and go to other parts of India to survive. So that is it for today. If you have any questions, just write them on your paper and ask me. You should be in class right now, so you can just raise your hand and ask me if you have a question. Other than that, you should finish working on your map if you haven't done that. It is due at the end of class.